What's up guys and welcome to the very first episode of my FIFA 20 career mode. Yes, the wait is finally over and I'm beginning a brand new career mode on a brand new FIFA and I just want to start by saying it feels so good to be back on YouTube after a period of being off it. I, I can't wait to get to get started on this career mode, man. I know it's going to be a lot of fun and uh, we're taking it back to the old school in this career mode. For those of you that have been around on my channel for a while, Hopefully you will enjoy this series, it's going to be a lot like my old content, it's going to be about 10 to 12 to 13 minute videos, post commentaries, going through the games and uh, just sitting down having a casual chat and I'm, I'm really excited man, it feels so good to be back and uh, great to be taking it back to the old school as well. So starting the career mode off, as you can tell by the title and you would have seen by the thumbnail, we will be beginning with Sheffield United, I'll get into the club in just a moment's time. Before we do that, uh, I want to show you one of the new features uh, for this year's FIFA career mode, which is Manager Avatar customization now of course the manager avatars were first introduced to fifa career mode they didn't really strike me as something which i was going to care too much about mainly because it was a default character and everyone i say everyone most people chose the same guy each time around this guy was pretty much always on your sidelines as your manager however now this year as you can see by the customization you can customize the build and uh, make him look you know quite similar to you i think i did a pretty decent job of my manager normally when i make a creative player or whatever he looks nothing like me but i think this guy looks quite like me he's uh, he's got my uh, my traditional sort of trademark uh, kylie jenner lips on and uh, i couldn't find like a, a top knot hairstyle with the shaved side so i just want what i normally have um if i didn't have my uh, my long top knot right now and uh, as for the uh, uh, for the outfit as well you have a, a real nice selection of outfits and as you can see uh, as we imagine Sheffield United in the steel city I thought I'd go with a color of steel a nice gray suit uh, with my brown loafers and uh, that red polka dot tie I know you guys like the red polka dot tie and uh, Mr. LGBT equality god it's been a while is uh, back in management and I simply can't wait so yeah we will be beginning this career mode with Sheffield United uh, of course the Blades newly promoted to the Premier League finishing runners up in the championship last season uh, in second place and as you can see, they are the lowest rated team in the Premier League, three and a half stars. And I believe they've also got the lowest budget as well of just £17 million. However, interestingly enough, as you can see on the screen here, as I'm setting up the, uh, the save, um, I did decide to disable the first transfer window. And uh, the reason I've done that, uh, as well as declined to uh, participate in a preseason invite, is because I want to get straight into the games and not change the squad as well. The season has already kicked off in real life. The transfer window has already slammed shut. And I don't want to see any any crazy transfers in the first half of the first season. I don't want to see, you know, Lewandowski at uh, Chelsea, for example, or anything which, you know, could happen in the future, but hasn't happened yet. No, I want to keep things quite realistic to begin with. And uh, especially in the first half of the first season, no transfer. It's just like in real life, the squads will be the same as you see in real life right now. But uh, heading in to the objective screen, as you can see, our objectives for this season you've got youth development, brand exposure, uh, no continental, of course, because not in Europe, and uh, domestic and financial. Uh, obviously, the youth development that's going to be really crucial for me uh, in this say with Sheffield United and with whatever team we might end up going to in the future if we do leave Bramwell Lane. Uh, you know, I love my uh, young talents, but uh, the domestic uh, success is the objective we'll focus on here as you see the full list on the screen for you right now. Uh, of course, the uh, board wants us to avoid relegation. That's the minimum expectation of Premier League. No surprise there again with the weakest team statistically and uh, we also, also had the lowest budget as well. And uh, as for the FA Cup reached around 32 stage, which I believe is the round after the one we enter. So get for our first FA Cup third round tie and uh, we'll meet that cup objective right there. Um, you might see the priority of that is, is very, very low, which is, uh, I guess, nice to know if we do fall short, the board won't be overly critical of us. But of course, you know, on the pitch, success is the most important thing and uh, yeah those are my objects as well just avoid relegation and uh, also reach around the 32 stage FA Cup do that and uh, I'll be pleased enough with our first season back in top flight so taking a look at the Sheffield United team you can see as I stop on this player here for those that have been around for a while you know I'm stopping on this player here George Baldock uh, of course our, uh, our right wing back slash right mid in this Sheffield United team criminally underrated as well and I'm not just saying actually to play against him no 69 overall is ridiculous I've seen this this guy, you know, I watched a couple of Sheffield United games this season. He, uh, he got the assist for the McBurney goal back in August. Wonderful delivery on the cross. He's a very talented player, Bulldog. Everyone knew that when we were kids. And um, yeah, a 69 overall, that should that should be improved. He needs to up that rating, no doubt. But uh, this is the Sheffield United team. Of course, I had to set it up in my traditional way of doing things from the goalkeeper down to the striker in the reserves and on the bench as well, because I just can't leave that sort of stuff alone. It's got to be neat and tidy for me. But uh, yeah, there's not a lot of quality in this Sheffield United team. It is the lowest rated team in the division. 
division. There is depth to the side. There are a lot of players out on loan, but I think that the key here is that whilst there is depth here at Bramwell Lane, there's not a lot of quality in the depth. You know, the first 11 isn't that bad, but there's no real standout players, no real stars. There are a couple of decent young talented players, but not an over, you know, a massive amount of, uh, of young talents with high potential. Uh, there are quite a few senior players here as well. And uh, let's take a look at the contract situation too. We've got two players on loan, of course, Dean Henderson from Manchester United, Bessic is here too. And uh, quite a lot of players just one year left on their deals as well. Thankfully, most of those players are players who will probably be let go on a free transfer anyway. But either way, it's not the best team. And uh, again, with £17 million in the budget, no way to make transfers in the first season. That means what we're going to do is get to work straight away by getting some academy players in. If we're going to get new players in the Sheffield United team between now and January, they're going to have to come out of our youth squad. And as I mentioned at the start of today's episode, my career modes do tend to have a very heavy emphasis on youth players and youth academy graduates, and that is going to be no different in this career mode, that's for sure. But uh, following hiring our first scout, a uh, five-star, four-star, we see our first player chat, uh, which comes from our sort of game captain, not the club captain, Billy Sharp's the club captain, but our game captain, Oliver Norwood, uh, coming to us uh, saying he wants to welcome uh, me to the club on behalf of the squad. And I want to say as well, props to EA for adding that new feature in, you know, player chats, player conversation, because I've been banging on about this for many, many years to come in my videos and uh, when talking to my friends and boring them to death. Like, player conversations in FIFA were just, uh, you know, one player talking to no one, basically. You couldn't talk back to your players when they come in asking for game time or anything like that. So it's great to know EA have implemented that feature. Obviously, better late than never is the way of looking at it. They should have done it many years ago now, but it's, it's great to be able to talk to your players now uh, with three different options, or uh, that one have three different options, and uh, respond to your players when they request something or when they're simply just chatting to you about whatever. But uh, following on from that, we do complete our Youth Academy setup by hiring our free scouts. Uh, you saw our first one was a four-star experience, five-star judgment scout, an Irish scout, as is this our third one, the Swedish scout called uh, Carl Johnson, and uh, our second scout is our best one. That's a five-star, five-star, and uh, our scouting team looks very healthy right from the get-go. Spent a lot of mil uh, several million pounds on uh, getting these free scouts, but again, getting players out of the academy is going to be a real heavy feature for us in this career, but especially with this Sheffield United team. So I sent our free scouts out. Uh, for those that wonder about the star ratings, well, experience, uh, the more stars they've got uh, equates to how many players they'll bring back with each report. Judgment uh, is, as you guessed it, how they judge the players for their overall and their potential ranges as well. But we sent our free scouts out and spent, again, a lot of money on those scouts there as our budget goes down to £9.7 million. Pounds. Uh, our Irish scout is going to, you guessed it, Republic of Ireland uh, on a nine-month mission. Uh, our, uh, our best scout, the Danish scout, is going to go to England for nine months as well. And uh, our third scout is going to Scotland for six months. And then my plan is to send him to Northern Ireland for the final three months of the season as well. You might be wondering why I'm staying close to home with Sheffield United, who are you scouting and not going too far afield? Well, it's just to keep it kind of realistic. In the first season, you know, Sheffield United aren't going to pick up too many foreign nationals from Australia, for example, or uh, or China. Uh, they're, they're mainly going to have academy players from, again, the, the United Kingdom and, uh, and surrounding areas. So to begin with, we'll keep it very close to home, uh, keep it more realistic like that. But obviously, as the years go by, we will branch out and look further afield for our youth academy talent. But for the first game of the new season, we did have my first ever pre-match press conference. Uh, obviously, press conferences have been a feature in career mode for many, many years now. But we've never had visual press conferences where you can answer questions. And as you see in the top left, it impacts your players' morale. Uh, so my team I went from content to very happy after these three questions being answered here. I'm not sure I'll show you all the press conferences in these videos because the questions can be quite repetitive, but uh, either way, it's still a nice little cosmetic change for this year's FIFA. And it does look pretty cool, to be honest, so props to EA for that. But uh, yeah, for the first game of the season, we were going to take on Bournemouth away on the south coast of England uh, at the Vitality Stadium. Of course, Bournemouth now are an established Premier League side. They're sort of like the blueprint for what we want to be in the next two to three years. You know, when they came up, there were a lot of doubts on whether they could survive in the Premier League. Now they're sort of established in the top tier English football. That's what we want to be. That's sort of the blueprint for what we want to do. And uh, Eddie Howe, young manager, me, a young manager. The similarities are very striking, really, aren't they? But uh, we line up in a 5-3-2. As you can see, uh, Sheffield United play either a 3-5-2 or a 5-3-2. Uh, that is their normal tactical system. And again, I'm not going to change that. You might notice the lineup was the same as it was uh, when we began the career mode. I don't want to make too many changes right from the get-go. Obviously, as the season goes by, I will make alterations to the size due to form of fatigue and whatnot. But to begin with, again, I want to keep it relatively realistic. Certainly not going to change the tactics and, um, you know, for the lineups again, they'll keep it quite consistent uh, in the first few weeks, uh, to say the very least. But uh, regardless, taking on the Cherries, opening day nerves, didn't really know what to expect to us before coming into the game. The real-life fixture finished 1-1, Billy Sharp grabbing a late equalising goal. I 
thought, do we go for the three points? A shocking victory on the opening day away from home. Do we settle for the point? Do we know what to expect? First half, thought we played quite well. You know, it was pretty balanced, even first half. But in the second half, so 11 minutes after the restart, Bournemouth, who were looking the better team, to be honest, they came out of the blocks flying in the second half and got their early goal. Josh King uh, making it 1-0. Was looking like the best, uh, best player on the pitch regardless up until this point. And then he got a goal for his troubles as well. And then just 10 minutes later, the Cherries really turned on the style. Their pass accuracy was so high. I was finding it so difficult to get the ball off them. And to be fair, this was pretty atrocious defending. I'm not going to lie. But either way, they just bamboozled me with a close dribbling uh, right uh, right, uh, right by our edge of the uh, penalty area there. And uh, after a nice little bit of passing, Josh King was free for his second goal of the game. Made it 2-0 to the Cherries. And that was how the game finished as well. A little bit of bad news towards the end as well. John Fleck forced off with a bruised shoulder. Just a five-day injury. He'll be okay for our next game. Though. But either way, King manned the match in this game. Bagging the brace and giving Bournemouth the win on the opening day. As you can see in the second half as well. They really kicked it up a gear after half time. I imagine Eddie Howe in the dressing room saying, come on boys, still to start. These boys are newly promoted. And that's exactly what they did. Uh, really up the intensity and bagged a 2-0 victory. So unlike in real life, no points on the opening day for Sheffield United. Starting off with a loss. Never a good sign. You never want to start the Premier League campaign off or any campaign off uh, with a defeat on match day one. You always want to get at least a draw, at least something to take back with you. But unfortunately, no points on the opening day. And I'll say this as well. You know, the objective for the league this year is to avoid relegation. I know a lot of you guys will be thinking, you know, with, with your career mode, you might be targeting, you know, like a Europa League finish. Believe me, no, I'm just hoping to avoid relegation this season. No doubt about it. Ultimate difficulty is a lot more difficult than last year. Great to see it should be a lot more of a challenge this season. And uh, yeah, I'll certainly need to play a lot better too if we are to pick up the points and avoid the drop come the end of the season, which is our sole goal. But that will end the first episode of my FIFA 20 career mode, guys. Really hope you have enjoyed. If you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you. It feels so good to be back. I really hope you enjoyed the first episode of one of my old school career modes, and I'll see you for episode number two very soon.